Good morning, my name is Megan Edwards of Focus Communications, and today we're getting another update from SK Mining, which trades on the Toronto Venture Stock Exchange under the symbol ESA. And joining me once again is Vice President of Exploration, John Decker. John, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks, Megan. Thanks for having us again. And yesterday, SK announced the discovery of multiple new VMS targets across the Scarlet Ridge region of the 100% controlled consolidated escape project in the golden triangle of bc now can you run us through this release and this new vms district that the company is developing yeah certainly um guess we'll again start off with the disclaimer um have quite a few forward-looking statements in this since we have found several undrilled uh, vms deposits which is really quite exciting I and mean, this area is spectacular I hear. Uh, so our press release focused on um, Scarlet Ridge and this whole trend we're calling the Scarlet Ridge Tarn Lake trend, which um, I'm outlining right here. It's an eight and a half kilometer corridor of VMS mineralization in the uh, northeastern part of our property. And uh, when we go out there, this place is just glacially polished no vegetation and the the guts of these vms systems are just exposed on the surface everywhere it's it's really quite impressive and we've uh, just got our first drill out to scarlet ridge um you know about a week ago or so is when we started drilling out there you know and in addition to having um a conductivity sky tim anomaly which was um what i was kind of outlining on that last um map we've got uh these really hot bleg anomalies in this area that's actually what drew us up there in the first place uh surprisingly this area has seen very little in the way of exploration um there is a handful of drill holes uh done in the um early 1990s focusing on uh this area that we are calling scarlet knob and there are some historic rock chick samples but it really hasn't been investigated since 1990 which you know to me is mind-blowing given the sorts of things that we're finding out there it's really um, quite a stupendous area um, so you know we can compare these um, the sky tim map that we have over here on the left side of the screen with the uh, the bleg map that we have over on the right side of the screen and you see that we do indeed have uh, these anomalies right here, conductivity anomalies uh, that correspond with uh, mineralization and our bleg anomaly. Um, I should note uh, that we're also drilling at TV and Jeff and testing these conductivity anomalies down there. Every one of them that we've tested so far has corresponded with uh, VMS style sulfide mineralization and uh, that seems to be what we're finding up here at Scarlet Ridge too. So it's a really robust targeting uh, technique that we've developed. Uh, but we're going to focus on Scarlet Ridge and uh, the uh, vicinity uh, during today's interview. Um, you know, so this is where we're drilling right now, Scarlet Ridge. It's a target, um, as I said, was suggested to us by our BLEG surveys in 2020. Uh, we got boots on the ground during 2021. And that's when we get out there and we're just blown away by the VMS system just exposed on the surface. I mean, this, there are sulfide stringers all over the place out here. Um, there's massive sulfide outcropping and uh, quite a bit of replacement style sulfide. So what we're dealing with out here is kind of a, um, a VMS feeder zone. You know, this is what we call a stock work zone in a lot of our press releases. And then we have these horizons there were the paleo seafloor where these hydrothermal fluids um, were shunted laterally and uh, made these replacement style horizons. And this is um, these are the two types of targets that we're exploring for out here right now is going up the guts of this feeder. And then um, we'll be doing some drilling along these lateral extensions along strike because it's really these replacement style horizons um, that make the biggest world-class deposits, such as uh, the ones that we see in Noranda in the Abbey Tibi district in Quebec. Um, so Scarlet Ridge is uh, looking very promising, um, not only on the surface, but in, in drill core, and I'll show some drill core photographs here shortly. Uh, but 
looking at some of the historic um, chip sampling results that we've seen um, in our database, as well as just flying over this area in the helicopter, uh, we started to uh, see other areas uh, that have similar style of mineralization that's actually quite close to Scarlet Ridge. So what we've got uh, here on this slide is our uh, Scarlet Valley target. That would be this large um, area right here, quite a broad feeder zone that uh, I've walked the other day. It extends for roughly a kilometer along strike and most likely gets out and goes up and over uh, the uh, hill to the west here. I'm actually going to be going out to the field shortly to check this area out um, in person. Um, and then we also have our Scarlet Knob target zone down here. This was formerly called AP. Um, this is the area that had been drilled back in 1990. However, uh, they are going after quartz carbonate vein style mineralization. Uh, however, our team has got out here and these are clearly VMS deposits. They have all the hallmarks of VMS mineralization, including that feeder zone style uh, mineralization and these replacement style horizons um, and just the rock type that they're in. It's, it's definitely a VMS deposit. Uh, so now that uh, we actually have a, a robust geological model to explore for these things, um, that's really one of the big reasons we're starting to hit so many VMS uh, with drilling and find all these new deposits is just having a, um, a robust understanding of the sorts of things that we're trying to find out here. And just before you go on to the next slide, could you run us through the meters planned in this new district? Yep. So I'm going to be... Um, drilling several deep holes out here. Um, you know, what we're working on now is an 800 meter deep hole because we're basically going up the guts of this feeder zone. I'll go right back here to uh, Scarlet Ridge and uh, we're, we're going, you know, right down the guts of this system. So we need to know, you know, how far does this thing extend? So we're going to be doing a fence or, you know, kind of a plane of very, um, deep 800 meter holes to test the full extent of this system. And then we're also going to be doing some um, drilling on these lateral replacement uh, horizons over here. And it's really an exploratory program. There's never been any drilling at Scarlet Ridge or Scarlet Valley for that matter. So we're really trying to get as much as we can uh, with as few drill holes as possible right now. So I, I would say we're going to be doing about 6,000 meters of drilling between the two targets uh, to really flesh uh, these zones out. Um, I would like to note uh, that we're, we're very confident that we're going to be hitting some uh, substantial uh, VMS mineralization here, not only based on what we see at the surface, but our handheld XRF uh, has shown very robust Pathfinder element support uh, for uh, gold mineralization. And uh, pathfinders are silver, arsenic, antimony, and mercury. And even at um, Scarlet Valley here, we're actually getting tellurium, which is uh, associated with a lot of uh, gold and several other VMS deposits around the world. So while we don't, we can't say whether there's gold here yet or not, uh, the pathfinder element support is showing a very um, strong indicators that uh, these areas may be precious metal endowed. Right. And I know it's early days, but size wise, how did this district compare against the TV Jeff corridor? Uh, right now, uh, well, TV Jeff, we're pushing the bounds of that this season as well. Um, we'll have uh, some news to report about that here shortly. Uh, but with our newest Jeff North discovery down to TV, we're looking at about a five kilometer trend of mineralization. I expect that to grow. Uh, based on our success with using the sky tim for targeting uh, right now at Scarlet uh, Ridge to Tarn Lake, that is an eight and a half kilometer trend of mineralization. I know as of the uh, time we are writing the release, uh, we had not visited the Tarn Lake um, area on foot yet. That was done yesterday and I've got reports back that once again, it's another feeder zone. So we have eight and a half kilometers of these discrete feeder zone uh, trends of mineralization that are separated by about a kilometer or so from each other. So 
in terms of scale and the, the kind of spacing between things, it's very much like TV and Jeff. And I actually am starting to imagine TV and Jeff, if there wasn't vegetation, would probably look a lot like Scarlet Ridge and the Tarn Lake trend. It's, it's really quite something to see this stuff just exposed on the surface. Um, yeah, absolutely. And the company, as you mentioned before, we announced commencement of drilling at Scarlet Ridge. What are the next steps that investors can keep an eye out for? Well, uh, we're going to be showing um, core photos. Obviously, uh, we, we've done some of that already. Uh, as you see here, we've got um, a couple of photos that are showing very intense sulfide replacement and silicification. Uh, we've got um, a lot of this kind of dark, darker material in here. That's actually the, the sulfides coming back with very strong Pathfinder element support. Um, so, you know, so what uh, people need to look out for is, again, I said, we're going to be drilling down the guts of this feeder zone. We're going to really try to see what the full uh, length or extent of those feeders are. And then looking at the uh, quality of these replacement style horizons, because that's where you're getting these fluids coming out onto the seafloor and um, or near seafloor environment. And that's where the biggest deposits are coming from. It's not exhalative out into the seawater. We want this replacement style mineralization. That's where the metals are getting dumped and trapped in the uh, sub seafloor environment as opposed to just venting off into the water. So that's the sort of things to look out for um, as what we're going to be saying about these replacement horizons could really be huge. Um, again, Pathfinder elements, they're important. But I must note, just because we see them, that doesn't necessarily mean we have gold. But it is a very good sign um, that we've got that. Um, this right here, I think, says a lot. Um, you know, once we got up at Scarlet Valley and we're standing up here looking at this feeder zone, um, you know, we were able to walk up this whole section that I've outlined right here. That is all loaded with um, sulfide stringers and uh, some massive, more massive areas like these uh, yellow spots right here. Um, that's really where you're going to start seeing your massive sulfides. Um, in every case where we get this kind of goss and this red to orange and yellow um, staining on the rocks, that corresponds with sulfides. Um, mm -hmm. you look at the mineralogy. Um, we have a lot of rock samples from out here that have tetrahedrite in them. That is a um, potentially silver-bearing sulfur salt that, uh, as we've seen at TV and Jeff and at Eskate Creek, is associated with gold mineralization. So we're definitely seeing uh, the right support out here in the field. And then uh, we're going to be visiting uh, these gossiness outcrops and the distance that's going to be the focus of this weekend's uh, work is getting out here. And, um, you know, it's, it's pretty compelling to see it just how close we are to SK Creek right here. We've got the historic mine here, as well as several Gaussons uh, associated with mineralization at SK Creek. We're more or less um, seven kilometers uh, west to north, uh, excuse me, seven kilometers east to uh, southeast of SK Creek here at um, Scarlet Valley, but we're still getting um, just as intense, if not more intense, of uh, Gaussian on uh, these outcrops uh, than um, we've seen up here from the air. So it's it's pretty impressive. Um, just keep an eye on the photos, and uh, we're we're trying our best to uh, keep everybody up to speed with uh, what we're encountering as far as um, uh, sulfide mineralization goes. Uh, but again, uh, with the caveat that we need to wait on the assays to see just how well endowed this area is. Mm -hmm. But this is what we see on the ground. Actually, I want to go back real quick. Um, this little tiny uh, red blip down in here, just for scale, um, that's a 225 square meter outcrop of massive sulfide, uh, which uh, we're showing in detail here and here. That's that outcrop down there. That's a 225 square meter outcrop of massive sulfide. Um, I'd say this sample right here we got from kind of uh, up, 
you know, I'm part of this wall right here. Uh, this sample has quite a bit of tetrahedride in it. Um, and HUD XRF is just showing very robust silver values coming um, as well as antimony and arsenic through this entire zone. There, This is just loaded with silica, stockwork sulfide, semi-massive sulfide, and massive sulfide that we're finding out here. It's, it's fantastic. Um, we do have historic rock chip data. Uh, this is uh, gold values right here um, from 1990s. We're doing a very large and systematic um, resampling campaign and expanding our uh, sampling because this glacier has actually receded quite a bit out here. I'd say, um, you know, this whole area, the glacier has receded and gone and we're able to see more mineralization. And uh, we're, uh, what we're finding with the historic data and um, our handout XRF supporting this is that there's quite a large trend of gold mineralization shown by the historic rock chips that we're resampling and confirming. But this is our whole eight and a half kilometer trend of feeder zones of which we've got our Tarn Lake feeder zone, our Scarlet Knob feeder zone, a Scarlet Valley feeder zone, and that Scarlet Ridge actually has two. Um, we've got a southern zone and then a northern zone up here that uh, still needs a bit more uh, exploration work done. Uh, but we're going to be focusing on drilling the southern zone at Scarlet Ridge and Scarlet Valley and then trying to do as much um, surface sampling and mapping as we can at these other targets. There's just so many targets out here. Um, we're going to have to devote an entire drill program to it next year to properly do this. Uh, but we're going after the um, best targets that we can right now and trying to get um, as much information as we can because it's, as we indicated in the press release, it looks like we've got a quite a substantial VMS district out here. And um, that's pretty rare for one company to control this many VMS deposits. And it does take time to explore these things properly. And would you, do you have any more slides that you want to take us through before we wrap things up? Uh, well, I guess this would be the last uh, slide in the show, I'm pretty sure. Um, <laughs> I've got loads of photos of Scarlet Ridge and Scarlet Valley. I mean, it's this place you can't turn around without seeing sulfides everywhere. Um, but I'd stay tuned because we will have uh, news uh, for TV and Jeff coming up. Um, we've started drilling at TV. Um, we've uh, finished drilling at Jeff North and we're starting to connect these two deposits uh, together as we had hypothesized. Uh, that seems to be the case. We do have a large trend of mineralization at TV and Jeff as well as at Scarlet Ridge. Um, so uh, we'll have a lot more exciting news coming up uh, over the next uh, several weeks. Perfect. So everyone needs to stay tuned then. Yeah. Yeah, that's quite fast paced, aggressive program. And we're, we're finding a lot of new stuff constantly out here this season. It's, the weather's really cooperating. The drills are turning very fast. We're going to be approaching 13,000 meters uh, probably by uh, sometime tomorrow. Um, and we're just pushing ahead with things. So there's going to be a lot more to come up. Stay tuned. Well, thank you so much, John. Very exciting developments for the company. And we appreciate the overview of this new district and look forward to having you back on with another update from SK. Great. Thank you very much, Megan.